Mel, how did you get together with Buck Henry to create Get Smart? Uh, you know, he, he was suggested by Danny Melnick of Talent Associates. It was David Susskind and Danny Melnick own and ran Talent Associates, which was a production company in New York. And uh, I think Danny suggested, why don't you meet with Buck Henry and uh, when you're writing this? And uh, and I did, and I loved him immediately. And I said, this is a smart and very bright, very crazy, very personable guy. So. So we and, and he liked to shoot pool, and there was a pool table up at Talent Associates, we were the production offices. So we uh, we shot pool and rode every night, and, and and you know we finally got it done. Mel, did you have any idea that the elements in your pilot with Buck Henry, uh, such as the phrase "Would you believe" and the cone of silence, would become no. comic staples and continue for the next five years? No idea. No idea that the shoe telephone would work so well, and, then, and now it's called a cell phone. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> I think we invented it. <laughs> so but you I didn't invent it. It was uh, Chester. So Chester Gould created a character called Dick Tracy, mm -hmm. and on his wrist he had a, a wrist watch telephone. So I was not the first. Now, at the time, were there any thoughts of casting anyone other than Don Adams and Barbara Feldon in the roles of Max and Ninety Nine? Yeah, I think there was. I think Tom Poston did the original one, and it, uh, somebody and it didn't get sold. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I don't know if we filmed the Tom Poston one or would you, I think we did. I'm not. Sure, I'm really it's hazy, but I know that, uh, and it was for a different network or a different production company. I think it was still Talent Associates, but we couldn't we couldn't get that one off the ground. And maybe it wasn't Mr. Big. Maybe it wasn't such a good script. Mm -hmm. And then when Buck Henry and I came up with Mr. Big, we knew that would work. And we had seen this comic around town, and it was... Don Adams was so good, and so talented, and he basically did William Powell. That's right. That was his impression. Inspector? You know, that was... <laughs> Inspector, let me say this. You know, and he was just... He was fabulous, so, you know... <laughs> So he was, he was a perfect, you know, by the way, this guy, you know, Steve uh, Carell. Right. Is perfect. Yes. He's not doing Inspector. He's not doing anything like that. He's just doing himself. That's right. But he plays Spielkis Nudnik or somebody. I don't know. <laughs> he plays somebody. But he is, he isn't, he's just very good. He's, I mean, here's a very, very precisely talented hip guy who knows he knows how to do it you know and and I'm glad he never was refreshing that he didn't do uh, an impression an impression right. of Don Adams yeah it was tough though I think for Don because that that characterization was so indelibly etched in the public's consciousness that I think it was difficult for him to get roles after that because he was no, so yeah. typed he never got another role after that that made any sense yeah how did Get Smart change your life, both personally and professionally? Well, I, in, in 19... When I was going with Anne Bancroft from 1960... I told you, February 5th, 1961, until uh, August 1964, when Get Smart was picked up. When it was picked up, and I knew that I didn't have to live on Anne Bancroft's salary, that I could make a living. <laughs> right. Because I hadn't worked since the show of shows. I mean, uh, well, there was some money. I was selling matches and shoelaces. I, I wasn't doing too badly, you know. <laughs> but um, uh, we had a contract for 13 or something, you know. We picked up the 13 in those days. And I knew I'd get 13 paychecks, so I married Ann. <laughs> there you go. And that was August 5th, 1964. Now, did you want to be more involved in the day-to-day -day production of Get Smart? Well, I worked for the first season, mm -hmm. and then I had, you know, I had other other things I wanted to do. You mm -hmm. know, the, I thought, you know, this is a great show, but uh, you know, we but we had amazing people like Leonard Stern, who could really who understood the show, who could work with 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 uh, Barbara Felton and Ed Platt and. And, and and Don Adams so easily and skillfully and and control the writing and you know so we Lenny Lenny Stern really was it was like you know when you when you bring in a big ship from overseas you need a brilliant pilot yes a pilot boat yes to moor it to land to land the, you know to bring it in and moor it safely and mm -hmm. and he was our pilot if you've enjoyed your journey on the TV time machine. Please like and subscribe.
We look forward to having you again on the TV Time Machine.